happy fall. I am in central Utah in Fish Lake National Forest. And what you see behind me here is exactly why I'm here. Now it's not just to see aspens change into their fall leaves, but there's something very special about this place. This is the Pando. The Pando is the largest known living organism. It is 106 acres of one clonal aspen stand. So these aspens have been DNA proven to be one living organism and they share a root system. Maybe it's kind of nerdy, but I thought that was kind of cool and it was reason enough for me to come by and check it out. I camped here last night and I'm gonna be here again tonight. So I plan to spend some time today exploring. You may have noticed that a portion of the Pando is fenced off. The reason for that is the National Forest Service has discovered that the Pando is dying. 
it's normal for an aspen colony to have some attrition, but that would be balanced by regeneration. In the case of the pando, there is attrition, but the regeneration was not fruitful. Since it is such a large colony, they took the opportunity to segregate a control to test some theories that they have of what could be negatively impacting the pando. The Forest Service has a great video explaining all of the amalgamation of theories that they believe could be having an impact. It could be a combination anywhere thereof, or maybe there's one specific thing. The video I watched, which I'll link below, was five years old. Walking around in the fenced area on the trail, I did notice that there did seem to be some regrowth. So I'm hopeful that they're finding the solution. When I was walking around this dispersed camping area, I noticed that the campsite that's actually directly across from me is so littered with tons of bottles and cans and food wrappers. And a lot of it was in the fire pit. So I just couldn't leave it like that. Um, so I, I collected almost a full trash bag of trash from there. And it's just unfathomable to me that someone would just have that much disrespect for these places. Like, Sometimes I think I give people the benefit of the doubt because it's maybe a lack of education on a topic that keeps them from doing the right thing. But there's no level of education required to not act like that. That's just common decency. And it made me really angry <laughs> because you look at this stark contrast of what's happening with the Forest Service and they're trying to take care of this land and preserve these trees and they make these areas you know these are public areas but these designated dispersed campsites that you stay at for free they're accessible to the public and somebody comes along and just has such blatant disrespect for the environment like that it's just the contrast of those th two things I don't know it just it makes my heart hurt On the topic of sustainability, I have been taking a look at what I personally can do better to be more sustainable as I'm on the road. Specifically with trash, it's funny how when you don't have like a place to put trash where it just disappears, um, like at home, you, you put it in the bin and then you take it to the sidewalk or to the dump or whatever, but for this, when I'm on the road, it, especially when I'm off grid for days at a time, I am surprised by how much trash I generate, even though I try to make conscientious decisions. For example, I don't use paper plates, I don't use plasticware, I use real dishes. Um, I try not to use too many paper towels if I can use something that I will be able to wash and reuse later, I do that. But, um, I could definitely be better. I mean, a lot of the food that I'm eating is shelf-stable, prepackaged food, so that doesn't help, but there must be more that I can do. And I'm going to start researching some options and figure out what I can do better.
was thinking that maybe I came here a little bit too early. Um, it certainly maybe isn't quite peak, but temperatures cooled down a lot this evening when the winds picked up. And a lot of the leaves are already starting to fall from the trees. So maybe I'm just a little hair too early, but um, still beautiful. Kind of just winding down for my evening, doing some work. Like I said, it got cool, so I made myself one of my favorite warm fall beverages. And no, it's not pumpkin spiced anything. It is a chai tea, and to it I add Italian sweet cream creamer, which is my favorite indulgent creamer. Um, and it's pretty delicious, actually. I haven't taken a sip yet, though. I should do that. Okay, it's good, a little bit hot. <laughs> I think I'll give it a moment. I'm interested to know what kind of animal sounds I will hear tonight. Last night, there were a lot of bugling elk. Elk are still in the rut, and um, I could tell. <laughs> It was like a symphony of bugles, <laughs> bugle horns. That is a very beautiful call, kind of haunting actually. It was, um, yeah, it was a lot of that. I heard an owl. I'm pretty sure there was a deer or something in my camp. And then, what else did I hear? I may have heard a big pack of coyotes. That also might have been the bu a bugling elk, um, just from a different direction. I'm not sure. I, I was awoken by it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was actually coyotes. Um, I had my blankets up over my, my head, so the sound was slightly distorted. Because uh, it is getting colder, as I mentioned, and sometimes I completely cocoon myself in my blankets, and then I'm nice and toasty. We are now in autumn and it's time for me to start thinking seriously and putting together my colder weather camping kit. I have camped in cold temperatures backpacking before as well as car camping, so I'm well aware of a number of modifications that I need to make for my setup in order to stay warm and I need to get serious about pulling those things together. I'm going to give it another shot. Okay. Drinkable. 